and welcome to my YouTube channel. So tonight we're going for a wander up the Gowan Hill and we're going to find the medieval beheading stone. It's steeped in history, so is the location. So join me and let's see what images we can get tonight. So this is the famous ancient beheading stone on top of Gowan Hill in Stirling. It overlooks the Karst of Stirling. It's shadowed by Stirling Castle, but because of the, the trees, you can't really see Stirling Castle very well. And then over in the Karst at Abbey Craig, the National Wallace Monument is over there. So what we'll do is we'll move around this location a number of times. We'll get a whole number of different photographs. But the beheading stone was used in the 15th century. And in 1425, the stone was used to execute, execute the Duke of Mulberry and his two sons, and also the Earl of Lennox, who came from Dun area uh, within Stirlingshire. So what I'll do is I'll take various compositions tonight. There's a fantastic view across Stirling, which you'll see in a little while. We've got the view that goes west, We've got the view that goes north. There's some real late rain clouds behind me, so there's a good chance we might get some sun rays coming through. But I'm going to speed up because there's a good chance I could get showered with rain. So I've set my camera up tonight. It's really dull. But what I've done is I've set the camera up for ISO 100, F60, um, a sixtieth of a second. But I've also focused in on the beheading stone. And let's see how that works. Yeah, so that's nice. So what I'll do now is I'll just move round and we'll see if we can get a lower shot of the beheading stone. So I've just moved in front of the beheading stone. I'm conscious that there's a public information board behind it. And I, I don't want that in the image. So I'm standing straight in front of it. I'm a wee bit lower down. So I've focused in on the the plaque in front of the beheading stone. I'm 160th of a second, F8 and ISO 100. Okay, so what I'll also do is I'll get closer to the stone and I'll see if we can get some close-ups because in the stone, the top of the stone's marked where all the axes hit it when it beheaded. Um, some high profile um, dignitary in those days and also for some serious crimes people were beheaded as well. So let's move closer and we'll see if we can get some close-up details and close-up shots of the stones and see if we can actually see the cutting edges in the stone. So the Gowan Hill is also famous for a, a very rare ghost that goes about these parts in Stirling and the, this ghost is very rarely seen but the ghost is called the White Lady. So if you're coming up for a visit, make sure you come up in daylight and not at night time or you might bump into the White Lady. So I'm holding the camera, so it might be a wee bit jittery at the moment because there's really high winds as well. But there's actually four bridges that you can see from this viewpoint crossing the River Forth. So that there is the River Forth. And as legend goes, that narrow stone bridge that you can see there could have been used by the Jacobite army um, as part of their retreat in 1746 um, after their failed attempt to take over the British throne on behalf of the Stuart Monarchs and that was led by the leader, Bonnie Prince Charlie and then up on the far left as you can see there that is the National Wallace Monument famous for Sir William Wallace 
and everyone will know Sir William Wallace because of the famous movie Braveheart. So if I swing round to the right, it lets you see a wider viewpoint of the cars. As you see, the River Forth starts to snake its way around Stirling before it goes past Alloa, South Alloa, past Dunmore, Clackmannanshire, and then into the Firth of the Forth. And as you can see, you'll see the city rooftops here. And as I turn round, you'll see the beheading stone. You'll see the two famous cannons, the Guardians of Stirling. However, they have never really been fired for this, this place. I'm sure they were placed here at a, at a different date. And it pleases the tourists as they come up. And you probably won't be able to see, but just over those trees is Stirling Castle. And as I sweep round, we get a huge panorama of the view from the Gowan Hill. So I'll just move forward and I'll let you see more of the cars because the weather over in the west is pretty dramatic tonight. And the Gowan Hill is actually famous way back in medieval times because the Gowan Hill used to actually be a Pictish fort site. And the Romans used this site as well at one time. So I'll just swing back round and then you'll get a wider view of Stirling and then we'll stop as we meet back at the National Wallace Monument. And the mountain or the hill behind the Wallace Monument is the mine. So I'm just going to stand here and see if I can get some shots of the National Wallace Monument because some light has come through the back of the clouds and it's lit up the Demiat Hill. So that, that range of hills behind the Wallace Monument is the Oakle Hills. And Demiat's probably the, the most known of the hills in these parts. So I'm just zooming in. I've left the settings at 160th of a second, F8, and ISO 100. I've actually taken um, uh, exposure compensation because I want to get the clouds in tonight. So what I'll do is I'll just take another composition wheel, I'll do a lower shot. And then I want to take a shot because there's rain clouds over on the west. So what we might do is move over behind um, the beheading stone and look west and we'll see if we can get some interesting sun rays coming through the rain showers. Well, there's certainly... Uh, there's certainly some rain spots up here tonight. I was trying my hardest to try and speed up a bit so that we didn't get soaked. What I'm going to do is lower my tripod because I want to use the tops of those bushes as much as I possibly can just to hide the houses because there's more drama in the sky and if I just zoom in and focus in on the distance because I can crop this later on. Um, there's a nice shot of the Wallace Monument from here so what I could do is just get the right composition because it'd be good to get some of yeah, the bushes in the foreground but just heighten my tripod just a bit and then I'll see what kind of view we can get from here and if I frame this right this could be quite a nice could be a different shot it might not be a nice shot but it'll certainly be a different shot so I'll zoom in on the monument there Take the shot, and because I'm doing a bracket exposure, I can get the clouds. Now, the other shot I've noticed while I'm standing here is I'm right behind the cannons, and there might there's a good chance that I could get quite a nice shot of the cannons facing out over the cast of Stirling.
So the other shot I've got here is I've got the two cannons um, from the rear and then in the centre what I've done is still in Roan Club, their building sitting right next to the River Forth. So from a compositional point of view what I've done is I've centred the still and Roan Club in between the two cannons. But for this shot I'm going to focus in on the cannons only and then that will blur out the background. I've set up a exposure compensation but what I'll do now is if I put my hand in front of the camera I'll now start a focus stack and then we'll get an image where I can get complete sharpness from back to front. So I'll take this shot because I've no, I know I've already focused on the cannons. Now what I'll do is I'll focus in on the centre of the image and then what I'll do is I'll my, for my third shot I'll focus in on the horizon and that's over by Kincardine in Edinburgh and I can actually see Clackman and Tower from here, it's all lit up and then I'll shut off, I'll save myself some shots, I'll reduce that to a single exposure and then that's me took my photo stack with the bracket exposures to the rear of the cannons. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change my lens and put the longer lens on because I want to get some kind of closer up shots of the cannons and the way that they face out um, over the car to Stirling. But I also want to take more shots of the Wallace Monument from here at different locations. But the rays behind the camera have got more and more prominent and it's getting darker and darker so that they might turn out to be quite nice shots. Okay, so I've got my longer lens on. Now what I'm trying to do is try and get a composition where I can get both the beheading stone and the Wallace Monument in the same frame from this angle. Um, it's really windy so what I'll do is I'll up the ISO and if I, so I'm going to have to do a, a focus stack so what I'll do is I'll focus in on the beheading stone first and I'll get the beheading stone sharp and then what I'll do is I'll focus in on the monument because there's not much, I only need the two shots because there's no real middle ground from where I'm standing all I've got is, to be fair, the beheading stone and the Wallace monument in this image other than that bush and there we have it so I will now walk my way round um, the hill. So this whole area is the Gowan Hill but where I'm standing is the Moat Hill or as it used to be known as the Beheden Hill. Um, so what I can do is this is the Moat Hill, I'll stand on the Moat Hill, I'll wander around, I'll look and see if there's any compositions from the centre of the Gowan Hill area um, and then we'll just see what images and as usual I'll just share my images as I go along and you get to see what I'm taking photographs of. So, I'm having to be really careful because the wind has really picked up. I'm just concerned in case it blows over both cameras. So, let me, I'm trying to use these trees. I can see the rays. I'm just looking for a focal point, which will be the trees for me to focus on. And then I'll set, change my ISO. I'll increase the shutter speed. Oh, that's really nice. Now what I might do is just give myself a wee bit more room with the exposure compensation, but the wind is really, really picking up now. Um, what I'll also do is I'm going to stand on that wee mound and take another shot of the cannons looking across the cars. I'll take another shot of the Wallace Monument from that viewpoint as well because I've got a higher elevation and I can see more of the monument and that might make a, 
a better picture. The only challenge is there's no light tonight, so it's all overcast, but we'll make the most of what we've got. closer towards the monument because the hills are lit up so nice behind the monument and I'm trying see if I can get a, a shot where I don't get the houses in the composition but I can actually get the monument because I'm the background's incredible yeah that's a really nice shot so I'm just waiting for the sun to see if it'll creep above. I'm going to keep pressing the shutter in case I miss anything while I'm talking. But the sun's just creeping up to the peak of Damayat. And I'm just double checking because I've got quite a, I've got a real nice composition of the monument underneath Damayat. I'm just checking if that's level, yep. And the sun's, that sunspot slowly creeping up. I'll keep taking shots and then that way I've got choice when I process these images, as the sun lights up the hill beside the Maya, it's lighting up all the yellow bracken on the side of the hill. So what I might do is just turn the camera around just a bit. And do you know, here's something. When you use a long lens, put your camera on a timer because the long lenses are so sensitive. And every time you're moving and focusing, it vibrates. Whereas if you put it on a two second timer, it gives the camera two seconds to settle and then it can take its shots. And the other thing I do is I turn the stabiliser off every time I use a tripod as well. Because there's no need, the stabiliser's great when you're hand holding, but when you're not hand holding you don't need it. And sometimes the movement of the stabiliser can give you a blurry image on a tripod as well. So it's always good to turn your stabiliser, image stabiliser off if you've got it as an option. Right, so the light's moving away from there. I'm going to see if I can get a side shot of the cannons. And then what we'll do is we'll see if there is a shot. We'll see if there is a shot. I keep looking behind me to see if there's other images. And I'll see if there is a shot at the rooftops of the town. the cannons, I've zoomed in so I've got a really tight crop. I want the cannons in real focus because I really don't want the town to be in detail. And what I might do is I might move further back, or actually I might move up closer to the cannon and use the cannon as a leading line. I've got the beheading stone straight in front of me and I can see that could be quite a nice image as well. Um, right, so I'm going to move over beside the cannons and I'm going to see if there's a shot either of the rooftop chimneys that are going that way or the rooftop chimneys that are going the other direction towards Stirling Castle. So I found a set of chimneys where I don't <laughs> see Tesco. Now let me focus in on the chimney. Oh, my camera's getting blown about like mad here. Oh, it's really hard to focus in the wind. I'm going to stand to the side to see if I can stop the wind hitting the, the lens. Right, I'm going to zoom in just to check that they're sharp. Yeah, they are. Right, so what we've also got is another set of chimneys on the houses as they run up towards the castle, actually that might be quite a nice image with the different rooftops. That's a nice composition actually. Right, so I'm just going to tighten everything up. Um, I've actually got the lens at full focal range so that probably doesn't help because it's right at the 400mm li limit. And yeah, that's a nice shot. So the other thing I can do here is 
There's a small village not far from Stirling called Kiwi and there's a, a fabrication factory which I don't I can't remember the name of it now but when I was small it was called the Caperboard so I think this might be too ambitious so I focus in but the wind is going crazy here so let me see if I can no, I'm not so sure that's going to work. So what I could try and do is increase the shutter speed and then I'll see if that works. You never know. I might keep that shutter speed at a thousandth of a second and then just play about with my ISO because there's a good chance with the high wind um, some of my images might be blurry without me realising it. I keep looking back because the sun rays are back but what I'll do now is I'm going to zoom in behind the cannons and use the cannons as a leading line down to the car. So for this image, I'm going to focus in on the end or the nose of the cannon and I'll just, I'm just trying this to see how good that would look. Um, I'm just trying to check I've got the nose of the cannon in focus. Right, so there's some, that's a real macro shot at a, a long distance. So there's some paint, ah, oh, this could be hard because the wind's blowing the camera to bits. Right, so I'm going to pull back my focal length. I'm going to zoom down a bit and I'll zoom in on the cannon, the nose of the cannon, and just see, change the focus again and just see if I can get an image out of that. Right, so I'll pull back further. I'll lower my shot. Actually, do you know, it actually looks level on my spirit level, but when I look through the viewfinder, Maybe the cannons aren't level, but I would doubt that. Right, let me just get that in focus. Right, so for this shot, that's me taking a shot at the nose of the cannon. But everything else is out of focus. So now I'm going to do a focus stack. And now what I'll do is, well, there's a train just passed. I'll focus in on the Stirling Rowan Club and we'll see if that works and then I'll put my hand in front of the camera and then I know that's stopped. Right, so I've focused in on the old bridge. It's not a great composition because I'm actually, I can't get the monument in because the monument's too far left. I'm right above it, but I'm only getting a straight view. I've got the houses in on the left-hand side. Um, so it's not really going to work. What might work though? I wasn't that keen in adding the city in, but the way that the light's shining on the city tonight, we could just have a wee urban shot. So let's give this a bash. But the sky's lit up nice over the back. I've still got mega sun rays over here. Guys breaking up behind me, so it's improving a bit. I'm just looking over here, and the Still and Rowan Club's buildings. Oh, I did have a spot of light on it, but what I do like is I'm getting framed with the bushes here in front of me. So yes, yeah, so I've got that. Um, I'll see 
if there's any more. The monument's lit up again. I could take a couple of other shots of the stone from a distance using this lens just to see how it turns out. Right, I'm going to take a... See if I can get a close-up shot of the stone. Where I am. And the whole car has started to get lit up behind me. That's actually a really nice thing. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tonight. It was uh, my father-in-law Frank that gave me the idea because my father-in-law was brought up in this area and he knows the Gowan Hill and Ballandich and all these places really, really well. And it's not the typical place I would have thought to come and take photos, but on such a dull night, it wasn't a bad idea after all. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And if you press the bell notification, that'll notify you the next time I post a video. So thank you, and here's to the next video.